Hi everybody, this is Dr. Michael Shear coming to you with this YouTube video on how we go ahead and we approach case selection for locator fixed. Specifically, what should be a good idea for a first case, then also middle of the road and advanced cases, and of course, what to look out for. Because locator fix is tremendously valuable, incredible, but then also it's very important to understand where it works, and then also some of the cases where you may have a little bit of trouble getting started especially for our clinicians that may be new to Locator Fix, or if you're tuning into this YouTube video to kind of check out what sort of cases are good options for Locator Fixed. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So taking a look here, we want to go ahead and identify those initial or great cases to begin with, as well as your middle of the road and advanced cases. So getting started, if you were to kind of look at what would be considered the quote ideal first case, meaning it's a patient in your clinical practice that you just want to go ahead and say, you know, I've heard about this locator fix thing. What would be a great first case to go ahead? Meaning what does a certain patient indications have and what should I be looking up for in my clinical practice? First and foremost, mandibular arch. It's really pretty straightforward to go ahead and begin anything on the mandibular arch, whether it's locator implant surgery, all the way up here to doing the locator fix prosthesis. Why? Well, first and foremost, the bone is, a, is really high quality, pretty straightforward to find. Uh, you can usually place two to four dental implants with really pretty straightforward precision. And then also there's quite a few of those in your clinical practice. It also a lot of times is going to be an existing overdenture patient in your clinical practice. Maybe you already have two implants in the anterior mandible and you took a look at a comb beam and said I can pop in two more uh, and then do a locator fix case. Or maybe you already have existing four implant overdenture cases such as what's shown here on the screen. Implants at 19, 22, 27, and 30. It's a really straightforward thing to go ahead and convert those patients to locator fixed as your first case. You have a patient that's used to locator, used to snap in, snap out teeth, and many times you can convert this patient in in a single visit. Also, if a patient has four to six implants per arch with locator abutments, I know if you're a clinician like myself, I tend to place a few more extra implants than I was taught in dental school. So I know I was taught usually two implants in the anterior mandible. Usually in my own clinical practice, I try to shoot for four. That's my minimum standard of care. Usually like shown here on the screen, 19, 22, 27, and 30. And on the maxilla, usually like the first molar, one of the premolars, canine or lateral site on each side. Also, if you're a clinician that you have some experience with locator, whether it's back in dental school, in your residency program, or in clinical practice, you're a great uh, candidate to go ahead and jump right into locator fixed. Uh, why? Because it's really straightforward. Uh, if you're used to doing the chair side pickup, you're used to working with all the parts and pieces, it's really pretty ideal to go ahead and kick off and, and just take that same patient or use a different approach to go ahead and really look at those patients in your practice or even a new patient for you in your practice if you're used to working with locator overdentures. For those cases where you have healed the dentulous ridge and you're doing a new case, uh, that's really ideal. So in, in the case here example that you see on the left hand side, I have an existing overdenture patient. The example shown here on the right hand side, I've got in a healed edentulous case. And the reason for that is, this is that we're looking at this going, hmm, I don't want to begin my first case as a patient with natural teeth and I'm going to transition and do immediate load. You want to find a patient that has an existing overdenture or a healed edentulous ridge, good quality bone, really straightforward clinical procedures. Also, a patient has minimal to no bruxism and parafunction. Patient has adequate to good oral hygiene practices. You can usually tell if there's a lot of food getting stuck inside of their overdentures or in their locators. Mm, it's still a pretty decent case that you can use for locator fixed, uh, but your initial case is going to be like that patient that pretty solid. Like, you know, they can clean their teeth pretty well. They can clean their locators pretty well as well. And then certainly if the patient is adequate to limited financial resources. So as you see here, kind of the initial case getting started is a really kind of like a slam dunk case. Where once you go ahead and you do a few of those slam dunk cases, um, the next step, what do you then proceed to? Maxillary arch seems kind of like the next stage. I don't necessarily put maxillary arches as the first case that you should start with locator fixed. Certainly if you're experienced with locators, doing a maxillary arch with the first case, not that big of a deal. Uh, however, if you are um, still kind of new to locator, you've done a few cases over the years, maxillary arches work perfectly fine, but you have to be a little bit more concerned about smile line. You also have to be really concerned about cleansability of the prosthesis and the prosthetic design. A little trickier than sort of those ideal mandibular cases. 
Also, in this particular case, we're going to see here we're introducing patients with natural teeth where we're transitioning the patient away from natural teeth, going towards locator fixed prosthetics, middle of the road cases. Immediate loading, starting out with the mandibular arch, really pretty straightforward. It is a little bit trickier than that kind of ideal case, but immediate loading clearly works for your clinical cases for locator fixed. How, however, I do recommend starting like talked about earlier, starting your immediate loading on the mandible and on the maxilla. It's a little trickier on the maxilla. Mandible is pretty straightforward. And then middle of the road is your brand new to locator overdentures. So if you haven't done a ton of locator overdentures before, I highly encourage you to go ahead and take one of our in-person training programs, what we call the Zest Masters course. To find out a little bit more about Zest Masters, go to www.zestdent.com and we teach courses all over the country, around the world, and also in Las Vegas. Patients with adequate oral hygiene, they do a pretty good job of keeping their dentures and overdentures clean. You may have to create some prosthetic room. So middle of the road cases, if you see here, like I've got natural teeth down here on this uh, bottom right hand side of the image, uh, those are in those cases where you may have to create some prosthetic room for your patients. What it comes down to is, is we recognize that those are a little bit trickier. You just have to do a little bit of alveoplasty or compensate for ear implant position. Also, the patient with a low to moderate tooth display when smiling, especially since we're introducing the maxillary case option, you really want to be tuned into that smile line in those particular cases. Because if the patient has a high smile line, they're a much more difficult case than shown here like this patient in the bottom left of a relatively lower smile line. Patient may have little to some bruxism and also adequate to limited financial resources. All right, so those are your kind of ideal cases and middle of the road cases. What would be considered more advanced cases? And those you really want to limit to those cases. What you'll see here is if you're experienced with locator fixed, you've already done several arches, you've already taken some in-person education courses, etc. So advanced cases, severely broken down dentition, like you see here on the right hand side. Immediate loading of maxillary cases, as mentioned before, immediate loading of mandibular cases is more middle of the road. However, immediate loading of maxillary cases is definitely a bit more advanced. Bone density, aesthetics, prosthetic design is key in these as well. And I uh, you know, definitely uh, recommend you to go ahead and take some additional courses on immediate loading concepts for maxillary arches before getting started with these particular cases. So also two fixed arch cases, and then also no prosthetic room without major ridge recontouring and high smile line patients. Those two tend to go together, why? Because you're transitioning a lot of times from natural teeth broken down dentition to uh, implants and locator abutments with a lot of times dual arch cases. Anytime that we're managing upper and lower arches at the same time, it's definitely a little bit more uh, hoops to jump through as well as prosthetic design and occlusal forces that you have to be really dialed into as well. So again, that's why I would classify these as advanced cases as well. Bruxism, the patient has a fair amount of bruxism. Locator fix does work with bruxing patients, but we do want to limit their AP spread. So if the patient is not a bruxer, you can go one to one AP spread, meaning hanging more teeth off the back than you can with bruxing patients, where you have to hold back on your AP spread of typically 0 0.5. And then also if the patient has existing implants in place and they're also highly medically compromised, a lot of times don't have a ton of money as well. So these tend to be advanced cases, our older population, definitely treatable with locator fix, but make sure that you go ahead and seek out additional resources and take additional education training programs. So some key takeaways for case selection and what to look out for for your locator fix cases. Number one, you really want to really make sure that the patient is motivated to not have anything removable. Simply ask the patient, how do you feel about your teeth coming in and out at night? Oh no, that sounds terrible, doctor. Perfect. They're uh, a really ideal candidate for a fixed full arch prosthesis as well. So ideally, when we're thinking about choosing a patient for a locator fix, we're typically going to try to go ahead and choose the patient that's similar to that of all on X. Most patients are motivated by having a, quote, permanent smile feel for their prosthesis. Also, choose an arch. Start logically, as mentioned, it's the first time that you do a case. Go ahead and start out with a mandibular arch and then work your way up to maxillary arch. And then also check in with the patient to make sure that locator fixed is ideal for them. If they're not a great hygiene patient, no problem. We can always change from fixed to removable simply by changing the insert, unlike any other fixed prosthesis. So hypothetically, I start a patient out which I thought they did good oral hygiene, start them out with locator fixed. They're not doing such a good job taking care of their teeth. 
no problem. Pop out the prosthesis, change the inserts to removable inserts, send the patient home with those removable inserts for a few months while they get to really get to know their teeth a little bit better and then put them back into fix at a later date once they prove to you oral hygiene um, has improved. And then next step, of course, is this is we want to look at number of implants. We want to also know that locator fixed, you can do a fixed full arch in four implants per arch. However, many clinicians do prefer to place five or six implants per arch. Not always doable because if you have a patient that only has bone here in the interforaminal space, a lot of times we have to limit the number of implants, typically four implants in the anterior arch, uh, and then also a tilted implants and multi-unit locators to go ahead and give me the AP spread that I'm looking for. And in many other times, I can place short, wider implants in the posterior mandible or posterior maxilla and eliminate the cantilever. However, those times, a lot of times I'll place five to six implants um, just because I have limited surface area since they're shorter implants. However, in my personal opinion, I try to place additional implants for my locator fixed prosthetics whenever possible. The surgical procedures for locator fixed can be performed with much less invasiveness, typically nine to 11 millimeters of space requirement, which is the same as a locator overdenture. Compare that to a screw routine prosthesis, which typically requires 15 to 18 millimeters of space. So much less invasiveness with locator fixed. Also, immediate loading. Locator fix can be utilized in maxillary or mandibular arch cases and also transitioning from natural teeth to edentulous ridges. Finally, as well, a couple of summaries. What about the patient? Certainly, if a patient wants expedited treatment, that is an indication for locator fix because locator fix can be completed in less clinical appointments, typically two to three visits, than overdenture, which oftentimes five to six visits, or traditional screw retain, which is about in the middle, so three to five visits much faster, expedited, especially when utilizing a laboratory that has digital workflows. And then also certainly if the patient is concerned about costs, denture ranges somewhere between two to $3,000, overdentures between eight and 10, locator fixed 12 to 14, and screw retain 20 to $30,000. We can see here that there's a big cost savings when considering locator fixed, and it also fits into that middle tier option, somewhere between overdenture and screw retain fixed full arch bridges. Also, one thing that's, that's great for clinicians when you start thinking about case selection for your case, the nice thing about locator fixed is it really fits into your everyday workflow that you use for locator removable. It's essentially the exact same clinical workflow and laboratory workflow that you would use for locator removable. Other than the fact that at the end, you use the gold housings and the special fixed inserts instead of the silver locator housings with the removable inserts. And secondly, also very importantly, we want to make sure that we change our prosthetic design to a nice cleansable hybrid, something with as much convex contour as possible, um, compared that to a removable prosthesis that typically has flanges, a fixed prosthesis should not have flanges. And then certainly, finally, we want to make sure that you, your experience level is right there with us. So if you're confident with locator removable, take an online course, two, three hours, and then jump right into your first locator fix case. And if you're kind of new to locators and locator overdentures, maybe you did a couple of cases in school and you want a great refresher series of courses, make sure you check out our in-person Zest Masters program, uh, as mentioned in Las Vegas, around the country and around the world. If you're interested in learning about some of these additional educational opportunities, both online and in-person, make sure you check out the Zest website, www.zestdent.com, where you can find out about our in-person Zest Masters courses, as well as our online courses, where we have additional online courses, including additional case selection uh, instruction um, in our online courses at www.zestdent.com, and just click on Online Education Zest Academy. I thank you for your kind attention. My name is Dr. Michael Shear. Here's my contact information, my website as well. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out.